So we've got Michael Sowers joining me now. Michael, we were just talking a little bit before. How good does it feel just to be playing college lacrosse again after everything that happened over the last 11 months? Uh, you know, it, first of all, thanks for having me on, Travis. And uh, it's it's really surreal. I mean, I think that, you know, against Denver, everybody uh, was just like so excited to be out there. And, uh, you know, I know, I know for me, Personally, you know, like there was just so much excitement and so much emotion built up uh, just with, you know, the, the nature of how things ended last year and, you know, the process of playing all fall with the uncertainty of having a season. And then even even when we came back uh, from winter break, you know, not really sure. And then, you know, we get that opportunity again. You know, you, you're just so grateful uh, to be able to step onto a field again. You mentioned that game against Denver. For you, it has to be a little surreal to be putting on a different jersey. Obviously, Princeton was your home. It was where you had decided to go early on in high school. And now, all of a sudden, you're putting on a different color uniform. What's that moment like when you put that Duke uniform on for the first game? What goes through your head? You know, like I said, like it's just kind of uh, a lot of mixed emotions. Like Just very surreal, very grateful for the opportunity just to be playing again. Uh, you know, like sometimes I have to pinch myself that, you know, I'm 23 years old and I get this opportunity to compete at the college level again. And so, you know, I, I just try and take that mindset in every day. And, you know, I'm just I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be able to suit up again. Life is good, man. When you, you get to stay in college for another year too, like <laughs> put the real world off as long as you possibly can from, from experience. <laughs> Enjoy it. Uh, we, we're talking about this offense and there is so much talent. I can't all, I can only imagine what practice is like for you guys because you probably could roll out two entire offensive units that could start maybe anywhere in the country. How have you tried to figure out your role and everybody else's role throughout the this the fall and now the early part of this spring season? Yeah, you know, I think that uh it, it's just it's a chemistry piece and I think that, you know, it's going to come with time. Um, but, you know, we, we got a great group. We got, obviously have a, a tremendous coaching staff who, you know, puts us in the right spots. And, and we've been working hard at it now for, you know, since the fall and now into the early spring. And so, you know, we're very confident in our, in our group. But at the same time, you know, we know that it's going to take time. And it, it's a commitment to the, to the daily practices, the, the every single drill mentality where, you know, we know we need, we can't take, you know, a moment for granted. We need to get better every single day. And so, you know, we kind of been approaching with that mindset. Has it been different for you? Like what's been your biggest adjustment now playing at Duke versus what you were doing at Princeton? Um, you know, I think that, you know, like I said, it's just, uh, you know, personally, it's just, you know, playing with a, a group for four years and, uh, you know, me and Phil have been playing together really since middle school. And so, you know, it's just it's just playing with a with a new group. And, you know, there's definitely uh, some some challenges with that, but also some really exciting opportunities. And I think that, you know, the the opportunity that we have in front of us to, to really work towards something uh, and know that it's not perfect right now. But, you know, we know what it can look like uh, if we commit to it especially where we want to be by the end of the year. Um, and I think that that's just very exciting for all of us and, you know, just gives us something to work towards. Obviously, the team goal is to win a national championship, and there's a reason you go to Duke because it gives you an opportunity to try to do that here in your final season at College Lacrosse. But you're also chasing individual records. And, I mean, your name is now up there with guys like Tim Nelson, Justin Gutterding, your coach now, and Matt Donowski, Rob Pinnell, when you're, you're looking at the all-time points list. What does it mean to just be in that stratosphere? And like if you take yourself back to when you're in high school, look it up and, and watching some of these guys play. Yeah, you know, it's just a, a tremendous honor and, you know, just very grateful for, you know, everything that, um, you know, the, the Princeton coaches and my teammates were able to help me with, uh, you know, when, and, you know, a lot of those guys were the guys that I looked up to when I was younger. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you know, like my mindset has never changed with that. It's just, you know, that, that stuff kind of takes care of itself. Um, you know, just playing within the system, trusting trusting your teammates, getting a good report with them. Uh, the coaching staff, you know, puts us in great positions. And so that stuff just kind of takes care of itself. So uh, I saw you working out throughout the offseason with guys like Grant A. Matt and, and Matt Rambo back home in Philadelphia as you got ready for this season. And, I mean, I you put yourself in that 
conversation, along with Ament, what he did in his first pro season, and, and Rambo being a, a former PLL MVP. Could you argue Philly's got like the best attackman in, in the world right now? You know, I, I guess with, with those two guys, um, you know, they're doing pretty well for themselves at the pro level. So, you know, just to be able to, to work out with them and, and learn something with them uh, from them, you know, was just was just so cool. So, you know, I would I would put Philly up there with anyone. It, it, what it, what have you learned from especially got, like you and Grant have kind of been coming up together. But w when you have a chance to work out with somebody like Rambo, like what do you pick up from some of those guys? You know, just like the, the confidence that they have in themselves and they have in their stick. Um, and, you know, obviously you take like little tidbits here and there from them. But, you know, just watching them go through the motions and how much confidence they have in themselves. Uh, you know, you, you just really see what it takes to succeed at that level. So I, take me on to the field is do you have a favorite move like a moment, a, a move that when you complete it and either set somebody up for a goal or you score, you, like you kind of smile to yourself and go, all right, yeah, that was that was the one. Like, do you have a favorite go to? Not really. I mean, I always feel like I'm playing my best when I'm purely reactionary and, you know, whatever the defense uh, gives me, you know, that's what I'm going to do. And so, you know, for me, it's just kind of like, OK, he's doing this. Here's how I'm going to counter. And it's just kind of, you know, flowing with the game and not necessarily thinking about it or predetermining, but just kind of, you know, playing and not and not thinking. Have you ever surprised with yourself with the move you've made? Um, <laughs> I would say not really just because, you know, like I, I practiced them so much and, you know, I've been doing all the same things really since since I was in elementary school when I first picked up the stick. And so. Uh, you know, the game has kind of stayed the same, just, you know, changing le changing levels. All right, finish up uh, with, with one fun one. Uh, I know you're obviously a big football fan and an Eagles fan. Should the Eagles trade Carson Wentz? Um, <laughs> great question. I, I personally, uh, you know, I, I go back and forth because I'm a huge Jalen Hurts fan. I always was since he was a freshman starter at Bama. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think that Wentz just has, shows so much promise. I mean, if he wants out, I guess you got to deal him. But, uh, you know, he's I think that there's so many reports out there of him being a natural leader uh, and, a, and a true locker room guy. And obviously the talent kind of speaks for itself. And I don't think that one year should, you know, define a player. I think it's a, it's a relatively small sample size over the course of his career. So, you know, I say I say keep him. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Man. Like, if you can figure out a ma way to make it work and make everybody happy, I, I think he's he's a talent. That was probably the toughest question I asked you this entire interview. So, <laughs> it uh, was a tough question. Hey, hey, Michael, we can't wait to see you uh, here on LSN on Saturday. Uh, stay safe, travel safe, and uh, good luck this weekend. Travis, thank you so much. Appreciate